Hi, this is Paolo and I'm the creator of the brushes. In this session, I'm going to describe atmospheric perspective and how to use it in Affinity Photo to create concept art. So let's start. For the project, I want to share this set of concept tools which offer several options. These brushes have different shapes, respond to pressure, direction, and some also to opacity to allow value painting. You can also find textures for detailing purposes. The idea is to create a panel with different landscapes. So let's start creating our document. We can use Unsplash from Stock Studio. Let's take the first picture that appears after typing landscape. It seems to work very well for the purpose. In this landscape, I'm removing the saturation and I will add some contrast to bring out the different levels. Atmospheric perspective relies on contrast and details to give the illusion of depth. I'm using a simple standard brush to roughly highlight the main areas. With blue I have outlined the foreground, where the contrast and details are very evident. The immediately following area, purple, starts to show a lower contrast level. Using pink I'm outlining the forest, while with orange I highlight the mountains. So to quickly recap, from the foreground to the background, each level shows decreasing contrast and detail. Roughly reproducing the reference picture, we observe that the trick works quite well. Now I'm creating my mask using vector tools in order to have a frame for my thumbnail. Now we can duplicate it to have our canvas done. So we can start with the first picture. I want to render some sort of canyon with rocks and hills in the foreground here. I used to go back and forth with the eraser tool to shape things and refine levels. At the end remember to group all to keep layers palette clean. For the second concept, 
I want to have a more wide angle point of view and I'm creating something like a river or a canyon with a lake. I do not use reference pictures for these thumbnails. My suggestion is to use your creativity to shape things and redraw if needed. Do not fear to erase and start from scratch. Use the arrow tool to reshape things if needed. I created a sort of lake here, so it could be an idea to add some reflections. Here I'm using motion blur to improve rendering. and also eraser to remove unwanted artifacts. Let's go on with the third painting. I want to create a sort of wood here. So I will use the flat edge brush to paint my trees. Want to add some of them to the middle ground too. Let's use a selection and a gradient tool to render the sky. Some clouds here too. Also, I want to experiment a bit, placing a sort of haze layer between the foreground and the middle ground one, softening hole with a bit of blur. For the final painting, I am going to use the sharp edge brush to create some structures here.
double tap to use the eraser tool and shape things a bit better. Also, we can use the perspective to distort things a bit. and mesh tool to warp layers. Again, the gradient tool for the sky. And a different kind of clouds here, like jet streams to give a bit of dynamism to the picture. You can always add some characters to tell a story, maybe. Okay, this is the final picture. I've included two more landscapes just to give you some more suggestions. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.